Good morning, Lava Sultas. I'm very glad to see the faces that I already know. Hello. And I'm glad if some, somebody new have come. T today we are continuing to speak about um, an interesting for me and for many other people, for our students, for example, uh, psychological sphere, psychology of stress and coping. And as somebody of you already visited my lecture, lecture number one, and uh, the master class, I have a question for you. Do you have coping skills? Because today our topic is coping skills. <coughs> coping skills, facilitation. Facilitation meaning teaching it, uh, creating good conditions to develop for coping skills uh, for the young people with different health needs. It will be mostly the second part, the master class, different health needs. So my question is, do you have your coping skills, Martin? Uh, um, so simply, what do you think? Yes or no? Not really. I need more experience. <laughs> Not really. Well, <laughs> as I remember, last time you were you you were one of the leading students uh, who. It, it depends on situation. Good, a good situation. answer. It depends on situation, because last time we spoke only about one factor influencing coping and choosing coping. Uh, it is a dispositional factor or personality factor. It depends on our personality and the traits and uh, the personality organization, uh, including the biological basics. And the second, a very important, I haven't included it into this lecture because we are continuing, uh, factor is situational factor. Our behavior depends on how the situation is uh, developing and is, uh, uh, is, go, is going on. Uh, the author of the main theoretic uh, approach to coping is Richard Lazarus uh, from uh, the USA and he told, and his article is uh, called like this, if it changes, it must be a process about the coping behavior. If it changes, it must be a process. So situation changes. For example, uh, you are getting ready for the exam. Not a very good example, but still. The exam is a stressor, yes? The situation is changing because six months about the exam, you don't even sometimes remember you, you will have the exam. And the nearer the exam, the more you are approaching to the, to the day of the exam, the more is your uh, stress, or no, a normal person would feel stress, more stress. And after the exam is passed, you still have some stress, a little bit. And so uh, the uh, Lazarus, uh, Lazarus experiment was like this. They took the first year students uh, who only entered the university. Uh, do you start in September or in October? When do you start to study? Yeah, September? September. 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 They uh, suggested the students the tests in September, first years. And the starters, the new students. Then they uh, suggested tests two weeks before the exam. The first exam in the main, the, ma the main exam, the main speciality they are learning at the university. Uh, in America, you see, perhaps in your university is also already this system. Not uh, the, the marks, the notes are not given immediately. Is it so here? You are not uh, having a mark when you come away from the exam, go away. 
No? In, in some in some time, yeah? Yes. In some time. <coughs> Ten days, one week. In one week. In one week, usually. Yes, thank you. Then, uh, then, they measured the stress and coping when the student took uh, the ticket. What he will be, or she or he will be answering. Uh, answering or writing. And uh, then, in uh, a week, when they get, get a mark. And then, in half a year. In half a year, or perhaps three, four months, a term, at the end of the term, the next term, uh, students were uh, again measured on stress and coping. And uh, they proved, Lazarus and his colleagues, they proved that it is really a process. It changes. The strategies change. Uh, the ways uh, of uh, regulating stress change. Emotional strategies change. And uh, what is more interesting, these changes uh, are preserved during almost half a year. But in half a year, there will be another session. But they were asked about this first exam. The memory about this exam, the stressful experience, it, it was alive in their psyche, in their mental state, for so long time. So, but coping skills, it's something different. The first year students, we have, perhaps they were not so experienced in the university exams. University exam differs, at least in Russia, it differs from that at school. And thus, uh, sometimes coping skills are not enough. Coping skills, what is it? What is it? <coughs> it's not the same. What I wanted to say first. Yes, let's uh, start first with this. Uh, air coping skills. I'm sorry for the mistake. Well, coping has some structure, special structure. Uh, let's begin uh, with the most simple things. These are coping actions. It is here. Coping action, actions. By actions, we mean not only uh, real physical behavior, movements, for example, or something like that. These are our thoughts, our feelings, and our interaction with the uh, surrounding world. And what is it, coping actions? And, uh, it, it means uh, some things like a uh, uh, very narrow, narrow piece of behavior. For example, I felt nervous and I drank, drank uh, a glass of water, or a glass of beer, I don't know, sometimes it differs, yes? Uh, coping strategy, strategies. It is a more complicated combination of actions in one, in one direction. Definite actions connected with each other, for example, so solving a problem doesn't, uh, doesn't need and it is impossible to solve a problem with, with one simple action. That's why coping strategies always uh, combine uh, close, in sense, and uh, doing the same things, um, actions. To solve a problem, you must think, you must plan, you must reflect. You must uh, think about the future, you must, uh, uh, you must get to your previous experience. A lot of things, cognitive things you need, yes? Then to solve a problem, you need some emotions. You need uh, reflecting your feelings. Are you thinking right or it may be lead you to nowhere and all that. The second coping strategy, just as an example, seeking social help. Uh, seeking social help, you understand what it is. It is asking others for help, 
sometimes not directly even. Some people cannot ask for help directly. Please help me. What are they doing who doesn't, uh, doesn't uh, address directly? They give some things. They show they are sad. Yes, some people prefer the others ask them, what's the matter? Would you, would you need some help? How can I help you? So what is it? Kind of manipulation, yes? From the, from the point of person who needs help but doesn't ask it. Uh, the research data show that men, men uh, are not eager to ask for help so openly as women. Women are asking for help more often and they are getting help. You see, it is not uh, the, the psychology of the, the, former, uh, the former Soviet Union people, for example, uh, because the ideology was like that. You are strong, you must do everything. Well, uh, look at the communists. They tolerated so many tortures and uh, hardships and difficulties. Do not show you are weak. It was the ideology. Do not show. Nowadays, when individualism came instead of socialism, it uh, somehow comes back. Do not show you are weak. For example, if you were like a trainer, uh, I mean uh, a psychologist trainer in a company, there's a rule. Never show the organization you are tired. Just can you imagine, you have three days training, of course, a person is tired. Do you understand my English, by the way? Am I quite understandable? <laughs> That's good. So, seeking, I, I told you at the last lecture, but uh, there, there are new people here. Seeking social support or help is an ambivalent strategy. On the one hand, it is a very good strategy. I am uh, in need. I want help. Please help me. I'm lost in your city. What to do? For example, me. I'm uh, easily asking for help. And people react. Even if they don't know Russian, I address. Yesterday, I addressed a policeman. And he, said, he told me he doesn't understand Russian. And, uh, but he understood English, a very good example. <laughs> and he, he helped me, he showed me the direction, where to go. Uh, on the other hand, it is a very bad strategy, I told you already, because if you are all, are all time, all time, constantly are asking for help, for support, are you helpless, are you able, or are you disabled, are you mentally okay? Do it yourself. It is so easy. A child, yes, a child, children often are asking for help because it is natural. Or, or they rely on the adults so much that they don't want to be more, um, more on their own. And it is not good for their development, by the way. So, coping styles, most complicated uh, element of structure. Every of us, since our adolescence, since our teenagers, approximately 14, 16 years old, have a, a permanent, a permanent coping style. Of course, it is in adolescence, in young years, it may change, but uh, but it is a, it is a permanent trait. It is very. Um, uh, very much dependent, it, it, it depends on, uh, as, as the research show, on the cultural uh, context, on the family context, what a, a person is taught in the family, what are, what are, are his parents doing in uh, difficult situations, what have they done, not even in this generation, but several generations before. 
there is such a very interesting sphere in psychology. It is called transgenerational psychology. Have you heard about it? Transgenerational. No? Transgenerational means, can you trans, uh, help me with the translation? <coughs> Trans means uh, mesh, not, not inter, сквозь поколение, сквозь поколение, на сквозь. Sorry for this. This is for psychology, yes? Transgenerational psychology. The psychology of, the, of my uh, grand, grand, grandparents, of my family tree that may influence me in my everyday life now, me and my children. So it uh, has to do with the family tree. You know, yes, there is a kind of a, a genealogical tree, but in psychology it is called genogram, genosociogrammal tree. And one of the leaders, she is uh, uh, she's very old, a psychotherapist, a famous psychotherapist who lives in France, but he formerly lived in Russia before. Uh, in her childhood, is Anne Anselin Schutzenberger. She's alive, she's 105 years old, perhaps. Schutzenberger. They, her uh, family, her family, and Schutzenberger, here. Anna Selin Schutzenberger, her most famous book is called uh, The Ancestors The Ancestors Syndrome, Syndrome Priedkov, the syndrome of my family tree. Why I'm speaking about it? Uh, because it is simply interesting and it is really influences coping. For example, there's such a question for you. How did your family survive in very bad times during the repressions, the wars that uh, this country has lived through? How somebody were going to the West, saving their lives, yes? Somebody were pretending they are nobody, just being very tolerant to the powers, and so on. But in the families, and uh, Anselin Schutzenberger says, uh, the families have very, uh, very many mysteries in the ways they survived. Some were killing people, for example, yes. A lot of people in uh, totalitarian states were simply killers during Stalin times, for example, yes. And they are now unknown even to their families because they didn't uh, admit it. And the state did nothing to Germany did, yes, and Poland did. But I don't know about Lithuania. Have you done it? Who were the killers who shot people together with the fascists, for, for, for example? Uh, it, uh, Anselin Schutzerberger proved it, that it uh, influences our mental health, our today's life, and the way we cope. But now let's uh, uh, look at the styles, what are they? In general, they are large group of strategies. For example, one style uh, meaning approaching to the stressor, not having fear of the stressor, and doing something to make it lesser, to diminish it, to put it away. 
Another style is distancing from the stressor as much as possible. And uh, there, there is the third style to be to pretend you are dead. To pretend you are dead. You are here, but you are so passive. You are doing nothing. And it, it is also the strategy of coping and even of uh, surviving. Uh, surviving. And uh, at the end of this slide is coping skills with a grammatical mistake, I'm sorry. Coping skills, they are also coping strategies, but they are so well trained by us, so easily used and often used, that uh, they have become skills. What are you skilled at? When in a, in a difficult situation, please. Uh, take a sheet of paper, please do it now, and answer the question, what do I do in the stressful situation? <coughs> what are three main things that I easily do when I feel big stress? Understand? What do I do in a stressful situation when I feel great stress, big stress, and uh, I easily do it. You please answer. Your answer. Just now on the on the sheet of paper. Oh, no, no not say, not say. Thank yeah. you. Uh, I want some people think think for themselves because they may be under your influence unconsciously. <laughs> You say you have not, not enough coping skills, still you have. Everybody of you, healthy people who study at the university or work at the university, who can come to the lectures on your own hands, you have coping skills. And I think you even have good coping skills. What are most easy for you, most mm, useful, most... Of course, coping skills, not all of them are constructive. We also have destructive coping skills. For example, smoking. Let's smoke, I'm nervous. The girls say sometimes at our university. Not, not boys, boys do not smoke in majority. But the girls do. Sorry to say, you don't have an, uh, you don't even have a place for smoking. Yes, here yeah. at the university yard. No, you don't have the place, a special place for smoking. Yes, we have a special place. Have. <laughs> I wanted to idealize <laughs> the university you study and work at. So what you are usually doing? What? Are you doing as if you are well trained to do it and easily you use it you, you use it easily these are the marks of skill skill in Russian means Navik Navik it means a, a well trained action well trained action what you really can do well have you done it? Have you put it? And later we'll have a small test about very, very not strict, very easy uh, to, to look at more attentively. Well, who can, who can tell, please, what I'm usually doing, Daiva? In, in Lithuania, yes. Speak your language, please. Uh, you can speak Lithuanian. Can... 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 What I'm doing in my stressful situation, I'm trying to relax. Yes. Three things. I think uh, I... Mm -hmm. Lithuanian. Everybody understands. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, second, but I can, I self change 
in this situation uh -huh. and what I can not change. Uh -huh. uh, you analyze what you can change, what you cannot change. Mm -hmm. So these are cognitive. You have you have cognitive coping skills. Thank you very much. Now, Martin, your turn. Please, please. Uh, when I am in this stressful situation, I usually keep uh, talking to myself. What can I do to lower the stress level? So I usually uh, get back from that, going back from this situation, stressful situation, and think about uh, something good. Something different. That you are a bit distance from it, and look at it from the distance. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, second, I usually uh, do some sports. Uh, it helps me to lower the stress level. I, I I think many people envy you because it is one of the most productive way of uh, losing. Uh, uh, tension and strain. Uh -huh. That's and very good. In the last one, uh, I usually write uh, some bad words in paper and I smash it uh -huh. and uh -huh. throw to the recycle bin. <laughs> I think some psychologist told you. <laughs> Maybe I heard Me? <laughs> You don't remember. So, somebody else? What are you doing? I? No, no, no. First you. If if you are not against. You need some translation? Um, yes, I do. She... She, she goes back from a stressful environment. What is the name? Vaita. 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 Please call uh, the girl by name. Vaita, not she. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Vaita said that. Uh, uh, <laughs> I want to say she. <laughs> Vaita goes back from the stressful environment. Uh huh. You. Leaped from it, yes? Monday was still. Uh-huh. Obigat in Russian. Mm -hmm. What else? Uh, uh, I yeah. like to listen to music because it helps to mm -hmm. lower, reduce mm -hmm. stress. This, uh, uh, this uh, coping skill is called distraction. Distraction She's from the stressful situation. Not distraction. To distract <laughs> means <laughs> atvlikatsa. In Russian, it means atvlikatsa. Mm -hmm. It's a very good, a very good uh, skill. Yes, to listen to music, to the music, and to to see some beautiful things, even to see some uh, serials on TV. It, it is all kinds of uh, distraction. But you like music. The music is more, more complicated because our brain. Uh, must be ready to listen to music. And the third? Uh, she goes for a walk. For a walk. For a walk, for a walk yes. Uh, contact with nature, contact uh, with uh, something beautiful, fresh air, and especially uh, walking fast, for example, when you are strained, yeah? Walking fast, even running as you do, yes, or you do something else. It is very good. Thank you. I think uh, you understand what coping skills are, yes. And it was only the illustration. I, but I wanted to um, to to return back a bit. Uh, the third factor. So we speak about personality that influences our choice of uh, coping. 
Uh, the situation itself, I told you about Lazarus' experiment. And uh, sociocultural background is very much of uh, importance, is very important here. We are coping not in the cosmic space. We are coping among uh, specific uh, relationships with uh, people. And from culture to culture, we have differences in how we cope. Uh, later I'll t tell you. For example, in modern Russia, what cultural background influences on how we cope? You may read, but I only want to mark you several things. Values diffusion, uh, this process is called. Values diffusion. diffusion. It means values are changing and even mm, transformed and even deformed now after the perestroika 20, for, for, for 30 years already, 30 years. And the previous values, previous values, which were uh, ideologically uh, different, they changed, of course, they changed. Uh, another one, uh, what is I don't like, these are uh, rather famous uh, psychologists from the Higher School of Economics in Moscow, which is now leading the Moscow State University, and then they are two, two concurrents, they are even the enemies in, in a way, <laughs> for the students and for, uh, for glory, who is the, the best university. <coughs> well, values are ambivalent, not differentiated, and unstable. Values are unstable. How are children being bullied at school? Uh, little children in the primary school. You are poor. One of the one of the words, one of the form, formulation, one of the. Uh, it, it is a curse. It is a curse. Rugatelstva. Cursing each other, they say, you are poor. It means you don't have a, a rich mobile phone. Uh, the driver doesn't bring you to school by a very expensive car because there are some, some children in one class who are of different social status, or a different social and e economic level. What else? Mm. That is me. Hostility grows and home violence including a lot of cases, a lot of uh, uh, things are doing in this field, hostility, killing people in the streets. Two years ago, Boris Nemtsov was killed in Moscow and nobody knows who did it. Oh, they, they say, they, this is some Chechen young boy, but he doesn't admit it. But I don't uh, want to speak about the politi politics. I speak uh, about what I see myself. Hostility growth means people have become rather aggressive to each other. When I'm here in the shops, I wonder, people of... Um, of uh, um, after 50, after 60 even work in uh, drug stores, in the shops, and they are very polite. And they are very, very different from what we see in Russia. In Russia, uh, the former Soviet style of being rude has come back. Not everywhere, not everywhere. Of course, if you, if you go to a very uh, expensive shop, you will be invited <laughs> with all the with all the gestures they can and the sweet words and all that. But in everyday life, in uh, in ordinary shop, you may be you, you may meet very rude uh, uh, shop people, shop girls, and uh, anybody. Not to tell about the hospitals. They have become kind of uh, concentration camps sometimes. Very rude personnel, very rude service. Uh, then 
another one to, to comment. Negativism towards power on, on the one hand in a very small part of the society. But, but, uh, versus patriotism fast grows. It is very fashionable now to be a patriot. Patriot, to, to say yes, the Crimea is our, and all that, and, and all that. And people are quarreling in the departments of the universities, in the families, in the friend, uh, friendly companies, even in the friendly companies. My brother is a former Soviet officer, and he has a so-called sauna club. They are 20, and they are, they are going to sauna, 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 uh, for many years together. All of them are former officers. Well, they split into two parts. Now there are two clubs. <laughs> One club is pro-Putin and the politics and the crime is our, ours. And the second club already uh, are their uh, opponents, antagonists. So what, what I mean by uh, patriotism fast grows and uh, the, those who do not support uh, the power, they are accused of being the fifth column. We are enemies of, uh, in Stalin time, it was enemies of the people, people's enemies. Well, so it also, of course it is uh, influences. And look at the last one, still in all the polls and ratings, when people are asked about values, uh, they call family, in spite of this violence at home, it's not in all families of course, family is still value number one. Value number one, what people see unstable and want to have a good family. Young people want to have a good family, even if their own families were not so good. Well, and what I have already told you, but I uh, now I'm showing my own research, that collectivism characterizes the previous generations, the people who have been born in the 20s, 30s years of the last century, who are, who are now more than 75, 70, 70 80, 90 years old, they, of course, they continue to be collectivists, but young people are more individualists. Who am I? I am collectivistic. You see, still the majority, 63%. I am individualistic, 37%. What is the difference? <clears throat> what is the difference psychologically? If I am individualistic in coping, I rely only on myself. I uh, I do not wait help. Uh, I don't do not wait support. I <clears throat> pay a lot for this for being independent. I'm independent. I'm free. I'm doing everything myself, and I'm self-efficient. In English, it is called self-efficient. I believe I can do it, and I'm doing it myself. Uh, and collectivistic people, they are still want to be together in a team, in a group. They still want to hope that other people help in difficult situations. Not the state, not somebody, but the group. The group, they help. And uh, normally, one, one person has a, his, uh, his or her own social net of support. In Canada, for example, it's seven or eight people in this net. Canada is said to be an individualistic country. In Russia, it is still 15, 17 people in one's net. I mean, uh, people name those who can really help with money, with advice, morally, emotionally, and even by, by some actions, acting, acting for you. Uh, so this is 
the state of mind in a in, in the city like Kostroma. Kostroma is a, a conservative city, you see. In, in capitals, it is different. Uh, sorry to say, you cannot see it well. It is a nice picture by our famous primitivist, Kostroma, a famous primitivist painter, Yefim Chesnyakov. Here it is better because he didn't have real things then. He lived, lived in a very remote uh, village, small village in the forest of the Kostroma region. This uh, is a kind of a metaphor, a symbol for collectivism. Uh, he wrote fairy tales. This fairy tales, fairy tale and a, a picture is called the General Sepals. One man, one man, where is he? You cannot see him. He is he, and this is his wife. He found a, a large apple in the forest. So large, he thought he couldn't, of course, take it from the apple tree. But he has a, a cart, cart, which is a cart with the wheels, and, and, a, and a horse. And he uh, brought the cart, and he only touched by one finger, and the apple, uh, the apple fall, fell, fell into the cart. But the horse couldn't bring it, couldn't move it. And there was a a, a, a owl. It is you don't you cannot see you see you can see it here. And I said to him, of course, in human, in human words, go home and bring everybody who is in home, at home, and you will get this apple. He went home and asked all his family to help him. Everybody went, only the nurse, the, the, the girl who was nursing a baby didn't go. They tried to move the cart. No, no, it was impossible. And the owl repeated, I told you, call everybody. And then they asked the nurse with the baby, and the baby also must touch this apple. They did it together, and the cart very easily carried to the village. And they ate this apple, and they shared it with the neighbors, all the village, Chisnikov writes, all the village ate this apple till the uh, Easter Sunday. So all this, uh, he found it in, in autumn, yes, all winter they ate this apple. And they were very, they were very happy. Uh, it was a tradition to share, not to take the the treasure for oneself, yes? Not today. <laughs> I did a master class in Berlin on, on this topic, a master class in psychodrama, uh, several years ago, and uh, there were people from Eastern Germany, from West Germany, and some other people from different countries. <laughs> and uh, we played this uh, fairy tale, uh, and you, you cannot believe how different people behave. People from the from Norway, from uh, especially from uh, West Germany, yes, and and uh, from uh, from the Dutch. What is it, Dutch? Dania. Yeah, no, no, Russian. Dania. And English? Dutch? No. No. Something some, something different. Yes. They did like this. This is the treasure. I see it here, and I shall wait when everybody go, go away. Then I take it for myself. It was a strategy chosen by almost all Eastern members of my group. And uh, when uh, there were some suggestions to share, do you share with somebody? You had a lot. No. 
It belongs to me. I found it. This is the individualistic psychology, individualistic way of coping. If I found this treasure, it belongs to me, and I will uh, know what to do with it. And collectivistic is different, you see. Well, here I want to show you uh, our research, cross-cultural research, a little piece uh, between uh, differences in coping strategies between German students and Russian students. Well, what do we see? A, a little bit old, but I'm sorry. Social actions. Mm, uh, this uh, gray, blue, uh, German students, brown, Russian. Uh, social action are higher in German students. Doing something together, it's interesting, yes? Doing uh, taking part in some social activities to protest, for example, to make petitions and to make marches of protests and uh, doing, doing some fight for your rights and all that. Russian students. But it was already six years ago. Active recreation, sports. German students, Russian students. Avoidance. Avoidance meaning to distance from the situation. Russian students, German students. Of course, I think it is the mark of not constructive strategies. And non-coping. Non-coping, it means in stressful situation I'm doing nothing. I cannot cope with the situation. For example, the most awful form of non-coping is suicide. Conscious suicide. I kill myself because I can't do, I can't stand this life. I do not know what to do in this situation. So non-coping is also very high, sorry to say, in this, uh, in this research. In, in, what, what is my interpretation of these facts? Possible reasons for why do Russian students seek social support under stress much less than German students. And they uh, often avoid the situation. Possible reasons are high level of everyday stress. High level of everyday stress in Russia is uh, vivid. I don't know what is happening in um, German universities, but my colleagues tell me who are working at our university. The German students are rich, they do not like and do, they do not want to study. They uh, don't see the sense in the education. They are rich. Their family supporting them. Uh, another reason is perceiving the situation as uncontrollable. I can control this situation and I wouldn't do anything in this situation. Also a very bad way of behavior. Why? It is called learned helplessness. Learned, do, have you, have you um, heard this term? Learned helplessness. Martin Seligman invented it. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't do anything because uh, it is more than I. It is more difficult than I can. In trust in others, they say they are collectivists, not students say, uh, adults more. In trust in others, I don't trust other people. That's why I do not do something together with them. And growing individualism. This is my uh, explanation of this uh, of these data. Uh, German students uh, try to act together more often, more socially active, more socially active. Possible reasons: high level of social activities in the society as a whole, in Germany as a society as a whole, relying on society 
and community. What I mentioned, being in uh, England, for example, in America, they uh, don't rely on society as a power, on Obama, Trump, no. They rely on the community, on the people who live around, you, around them, the neighborhood, the city, the village. Democratic mentality, and at the same time, using own resources, self-care. Doing it for sports, in stressful situations. It means I can care about myself. I am uh, valuing myself. I take care. I want to, to stay healthy and all that. <clears throat> I wanted only to show you that cultural difference here in stress and coping exists. And the culture is a fundamental context of uh, coping research, individual or group research. Uh, uh, Robert Moss is one of the leaders of this direction. Well, how to learn coping skills? How to learn coping skills? Of course, somebody must teach us, our parents, our teachers, our friends. Adolescents or teenagers often uh, learn from each other what to do in a difficult situation. So let's uh, very, very quickly, very quickly, it's uh, very simple in a way, how to learn and how to teach. Personal stress management we need. Personal stress management, do you understand what it is? Every person has his own stress management system. And it is formed in, at the age of uh, teens and adolescents. Well, coping skills means we can lessen the stress adverse, bad situations. We reflect and understand our stresses and can ex if enhance our stress resistance and resilience. This word is very important. Stress resistance is understandable, yeah? you understand it. What is resilience? Resilience is a very good trait. Many people are resilient from birth. So, biologically, biologically more resilient as some plants. Yesterday we were in your botanical garden. Some plants are because of this cold spring, but the others are quite okay. They are stress resistant. But what is resilience? Resilience means that after stress, a person can restore his energy, his good state, and uh, his uh, activity is as high as before stress. Resilient are materials. Metal is resilient. When, for example, a metal piece is uh, hooked, there's, I don't remember the word, Kind of a hole, not a hole. Netina. How to translate? Deformation, yes. There's some deformation. But good metal may restore this deformation and the surface be becomes uh, smooth again. So resilient people, after stress, they are not ill. They have not bad consequences. Outcomes. They, they continue to be active and, and okay. What else? What, what else is important? To keep positive self-concept. I have told you already. Yes, I can do it. I am quite okay. I have resources enough. If I do not can... Uh, if, if I cannot do it myself, if I cannot uh, be uh, independent in this situation and alone, I, 
I, I, I, I, I find some good relationships, some good friends, some good relationships in the family, my relatives, and they help me. I do it with their help. Uh, a very important thing is to, to maintain emotional balance. It's also very important because you cannot act quite logically, solve problems when you are emotionally, uh, emotionally disturbed, emotionally hurt. So, to uh, work with one's anger, to uh, To rule negative effect means uh, to have positive results. We compared Australian uh, teenagers, teenagers of uh, 13, 15, and uh, Russian teenagers of this age, uh, whether they feel anger at school. Anger, gnev. Does everybody understand this? What did we see, with our, to our great surprise, that Australian adolescents admit they have anger. They, sometimes they are very angry with the teachers, they are very angry with the classmates, uh, because of some things like bullying, like uh, tricks, like naughty behavior. Uh, and they have good coping with it. Russian adolescents in, at Russian schools do not admit they have anger. No, they never feel anger at school. We took a gymnasium where p children are from the so-called good families, and we uh, took an ordinary school in a working class, working class uh, region, district of the city. Almost all the same at school, uh, when the tests were suggested, children, their children, they do not admit they have anger. Very low results. Is it true? Do you believe that adolescents are not angry? It's the age of uh, homo, 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 Hormonal, hormonal transformation. You have a lot of hormones. They are very reactive very often. It's normal for a teenager to clap the door very loudly to do some expressing of the emotions. Still, they didn't admit. But, but when we did the experiment, with uh, some, with, uh, some uh, uh, drawing tests and uh, projected tests, it turned out that they have anger. They only are very well trained. It's their coping skill to conceal it, to, conceal, to, to hide it. They hide the anger at school, when at school. When they go to the yard, when they go in the city, they are doing what they want. Yes. A boy of 13 near the bikes factory museum with a girl. They were speaking rather loudly. Then the girl went, it was the first day I was here. The, they were very tired at school, I think. It was already rather late, but still they were with their uh, bags. Well, the girl took a very nice and large branch from the uh, blooming, blooming uh, tree of the yellow color, and the boy <laughs> went went to the metal metal uh, part uh, of the bicycle that is there. And begins to push it by hand, by by leg. What is it? It is showing a negative effect. Yes, they were 
Perhaps they were under strain. I don't think uh, they did it consciously. They simply relaxed like this. So uh, it's simply an example of why all Europe is covered with uh, graffiti. Graffiti is yes. even in Greece. So beautiful churches and monuments of history and monuments that are under the UNESCO UNESCO supervision on <laughs> graffiti. Many of the things are broken. It is in Greece. Is it so in Lithuania? Not no, not so much. Not so much. Greece is all covered because the situation in Greece is very tense or has been tense for several years. Well, so simple ways, yeah, you use it, you know them. That's why I'm sure you have coping skills only. Only some of them, uh, some of them are not so constructive as others. We, can, we uh, compared business owners of a smaller business in Kostroma, or medium and smaller business, and their top managers. How they distract. Distraction is kind of um, a, very good, uh, a very good thing when you are under stress. What are business owners do? How do they distract? Smoking, taking alcohol, extreme sports, Public and charity activities, very uh, fashionable now in Russia. Uh, amateur performing, uh, and staging plays and uh, playing uh, as actors in the in the performances. Singing. Only alcohol and smoking and extreme sports are dangerous. Okay, yes, they're top managers. Their top managers, what are they doing? Swimming, touring, eating meals, uh, outdoor recreation, going uh, to tours with a family or alone, and handicraft, doing something with their hands. So, less, you see, less uh, destructive coping. Why? less stress. They, they don't have so much responsibility as the owners of their own business. Agree? Yes. Well, and now I want to suggest you, it is not a strict test. Can you read it or should I read it for you and you are doing it very quickly? Uh, 14 questions. Please uh, prepare and I read and you pl and you give some figures, you give some points to yourself. Give 10 points, number one, give 10 points if you feel you have supportive family around you. Give yourself 10 points or do not give 10 points or give less. Understand? 10 points is the maximum. You, you give yourself 10 points if you have a supportive family. The family support. Do, do, do it, please. It's very interesting uh, what is uh, the result. Though it is not so strict. The second question. Give 10 points if you actively pursue a hobby. If you have a hobby. Another 10 points if you have a hobby, or less, on, on nothing, if you don't have hobby. Mm -hmm. Number three, give uh, yourself 10 points if you belong to a social or activity group in which you participate <coughs> more than once a month. If you uh, belong to some club, some society, some group, and you uh, belong, uh, go to their activities, do activities with them, more than one a month. Another 10 points. <coughs> do you understand it? Not, oh, not, not so much. Number four, 
Give yourself 15 points if you are within 5 kilos of your ideal body weight. So you have in your mind some ideal body weight. I would like to weight to weigh, for example, 50 kilos. If you are within 5 kilos to any to any uh, direction of this ideal, for example, 55, you give yourself 15 points. If more, no. If less, I don't see anorexic people here. Also, no. Understand? So, if you are satisfied with your body weight, in other words, give you uh, yourself 15 points if you practice some form of deep relaxation at least five times a week. American test. Deep relaxation includes meditation, progressive muscle re relaxation, imaginary, imaginary, and yoga. Another 15 points. These are really very good, very good forms of relaxing. Relaxing is a coping strategy that is kind of, kind of passive, but it helps to regulate emotions. 15 what, points. Excuse me, what means to imagine? Imaginary. Imaginary. Means uh, the work of imagination. Ah, imagination. Yes. So you're working with your head. Yes, mind. yes. For example, um, you uh, uh, have some good music and some words, some words, some words uh, suggest you. Imagine you are in a garden. Imagine you are by the river. Uh, birds are singing, you are feeling a very fresh wind in your face. Ah. This is. <laughs> then, number six, give yourself five points for each time you exercise for 30 minutes or longer during and every Only once a week. <coughs> 30 minutes or longer. Five points each time if you exercise more give you yourself more for example you exercise every day 30 minutes give yourself five points for each nutritionally balanced and wholesome meal you eat during an average day uh, it means low fat high in vegetables and whole grain products. Understand? So kind of kind of uh, organic food uh, without much fat, without much no. If your your diet is healthy, in other words, if you eat healthy food. Yesterday, a colleague from America told, uh, what is American food? Uh, hamburgers. No, 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 no. And he, he answered himself. You put, you put <laughs> Nutella on everything and, and it becomes American food. Uh, Nutella is, is being put on everything. Uh, number seven, and uh, number eight, give yourself five points if you do something you really enjoy and which is just for you during a week during a week you do what you really enjoy not only you must but you do it free enjoy it number number nine give yourself ten points if you have a place in your home not everybody, does, uh, not everybody is so happy. A place in your home uh, to which you can go to relax or be by yourself. Be by yourself. Be alone. To have a room, a, a part of a room, a chair, a sofa, 
By the way, in, uh, long, long ago, I was dreaming if I ever in my life could have a room of my own because uh, we were three in the family, three children, two brothers I have, and we didn't have uh, rooms for every child. It was different. Who can say, raise your hands, who had a room for your own since your childhood? Raise your hands. Nobody. Uh, I didn't hear what you said. Who, who of you had a room of your own at home? Only to be, uh, to be on yourself, your own room. Nobody can disturb you. I congratulate you. <laughs> you are happy. You are happy, but you are from the new generation. People from the previous generations. We lived uh, very, very close to each other. <laughs> Too close to each other. Look the old films. The people are. The people are. Uh, in one family, in one room, and they have uh, they sleep in one room, they eat in one room. Everything is being done in one room, for example. And it it was a reality of the past for the ordinary people, of course, not for those who live in the castles in, in the palaces. Ah, uh, one more, ten. Give yourself 10 points if you practice time management technique daily. Time management. If you're not always in a hurry, in time deficit. See, there's such a notion. Time management. And do you know how to do it? And you use it. Give yourself 10 points. Daily, every day. You use it every day. So you plan your day, you organize your time. And you are not in a hurry, <gasps> and you are late somewhere or miss something because you can't manage your time. Excuse me, uh, what's the usual the usual ex uh, excuse of the students who are late or colleagues who are late? I was in a traffic jam, yeah. for example, yes. Eleven. А дальше дальше идет вычитание. Minus. You see, here we we summed plus 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 plus. Here is minus. Put away. It means subtract. Subtract five points for each pack of cigarettes you smoke during an average day. So you do not do it. You do not subtract five points, and the the last the last uh, four questions four questions more twelve subtract five points for each evening during an average week that you use any form of medication tablets or chemical substance including alcohol to help you sleep. To help you sleep, because some people have uh, <laughs> different forms of uh, sleep, of sleep um, deformation, disorders, and they use tablets, they use alcohol to sleep better. Uh -huh. Put away five points. Number 13. Subtract 10 points. Ah, it, it is uh, subtract 10 points for uh, medications and alcohol before sleep. Subtract 5 points for each evening during an average week that you bring home homework meant to be done at your place of employment study. So if you see, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't, uh, it isn't true for students, of course, yes. It means for people who are not students, and we are all doing it, yes, yes. we take our work home, and at home, instead of rest, instead of relaxation, 
we work. The, uh, the college and uh, school teachers and uh, university teachers, of course, they do like this. But not all of them. Well, that is all. Take the sum. Calculate. Calculate how many points you have. By adding. If you put maximum to the first ten questions, the perfect score may be 95 or even more. Because uh, from, in fact, from 95 to 115. Because uh, if you exercise every day several times, you plus more. 103. <laughs> 103. Three? How is it? Ah, you. You put away something. Uh, I calculated all the. Uh, all the. Uh, uh, put all numbers in one calculator. Oh, uh, how can it be? Are you. Uh, in some uh, question you gave. Uh, Zero. Uh, yes, I see. Okay. If your score is average. From 40 to 55, you probably have adequate copying skills. A very good test. Very high, very high <laughs> level for normal copying skills. For common stress. But keep in mind the higher your score, the greater your ability to cope with stress in an effective, healthy manner. So if you have high, high points, high sum, uh, a lot of points, you are okay. You cope in, a, in an effective, healthy manner. You may take the stress and <laughs> try it again, try it with, a, with the people in the family, translate it into Lithuanian. To prove that everything is okay with you, not like this. These are from Carnival in Düsseldorf. We have the Easter Carnival every year. Well, and uh, I like this uh, slogan: "Don't hope, cope." It's like a motto. <laughs> yes, kind of, kind of a motto. Very funny one. Yes, but very true. To we. Hope is also a coping strategy, but it is some, very often it is not productive. Thanks a lot, your questions, your, your suggestions, your recommendations for my English, for example.